Hi, welcome to Chronic Jillness. Today we're talking about heat packs and staying warm. Many people with chronic illness have trouble with temperature regulation. They also have a lot of aches and pains, which heat can help to soothe. In this video, I want to share some tips and products you can use for pain relief and to stay warm, both at home and when you're out and about. I decided to skip the scientific content for this video so I can focus on the practical strategies. You can use the chapter bookmarks or timestamps to skip to the sections you're most interested in. Right now I'm appearing in my natural winter state, that of a sentient pile of blankets. I can't take credit for that joke. I stole it from a fellow Spoonie and sentient blanket. Sorry about that. Well, as warm and comfy as I am, I'm going to take some of this off now. One hood, two hood, three hood. Oh, this is my favorite hat, by the way. Well, the darling of my winter collection. I call it my possum hat and it's so warm and comfy, I love it. But it is a little distracting, so one moment. So temperature dysregulation is a common problem for many people with ME-CFS. That's myalgic encephalomyelitis or chronic fatigue syndrome. There are various terms used to describe these symptoms, including temperature dysregulation, cold or heat intolerance, cold or heat sensitivity, and disturbed thermoregulation. There are a number of physiological mechanisms responsible for these symptoms, which I won't get into in this video. But temperature dysregulation and sensitivity is common in chronic illnesses, especially those that involve dysautonomia, which is when the autonomic nervous system fails to properly regulate non-voluntary bodily functions, like heart rate, blood pressure, and of course, body temperature. Temperature dysregulation can manifest in a range of symptoms. It can cause an impaired ability to adjust to a cold or warm environment, especially when there are sudden or frequent changes in environmental temperature, such as when you walk outside your heated house on a chilly day. And when the body does respond, it does so more slowly. It can also manifest in increased sensitivity to cold or heat stimuli, causing the pain response to be increased. So the temperature at which a cold or hot stimulus registers as pain is less extreme in a person with ME than in a healthy person. Disturbed thermoregulation can also mean experiencing discordant hot or cold sensations in your body, like night sweats and chills. For myself, sometimes my core can be overheating so that I'm all sweaty and clammy in my torso, yet my hands and feet will be as cold as ice. So frustrating. <laughs> I usually end up yelling at my body to send some of that excess heat to my extremities, but it never listens to me. <laughs> anyway, poor thermoregulation can also mean that exposure to cold or heat will trigger our other symptoms to flare up, which we certainly don't need. Some spoonies are more sensitive to cold, some are more sensitive to heat, and others react to both. For myself, I cope better with the heat than the cold. I've always felt the cold since I was a kid, but it got worse when I got sick with ME. I often feel chilled to the bone when other people are wearing shorts and t-shirts. And when my body gets properly cold, I basically can't warm up on my own. Putting blankets and extra layers of clothing on won't help. I need an external heat source to warm myself. On that note, I will quickly mention that cold sensitivity can be caused by an underactive thyroid or by an iron deficiency. So if you haven't had those things checked in a while, especially if your cold sensitivity has gotten worse than usual, you might want to get those levels checked with your doctor. If you can get those levels up to normal, your cold sensitivity should improve. In this video, I'm focusing on staying warm in the cold. I might make another video later about staying cool when it's hot. I'm going to start with items to warm your body at home. Heat packs are probably the first thing that springs to mind. There are various different fillings used, the most common being wheat grains. Heat packs come in all different shapes and sizes. You just heat them up in the microwave and apply to whichever area of your body needs warmth. You can buy wheat bags or you can make them yourself if you want a custom one. More on that in a minute. The advantages of wheat bags are that they heat up quickly and reach a high temperature. And because the grains are small, the pack itself is quite malleable and molds to your body. The disadvantages are that they tend to lose heat quickly, so you have to keep getting up and reheating them. They also tend to sweat and make your skin clammy, which can then make you cold, ironically. An alternative to wheat bags are heat packs that use lupins instead of wheat. 
Lupins are a type of legume. They're like little dried peas that do the same sort of thing as wheat grains. I find they take longer to heat up and they don't reach quite as intense a heat as wheat bags, but the heat lasts much longer and they don't sweat. I do find that they are a bit stiffer and less malleable than wheat bags just because the peas are a larger size, but it's not a big deal. I'll show you a few of my lupin heat packs. I bought these ones from the Spoonie Society, which is a small business from Australia started by a couple of young women with chronic illness. This one is shaped to fit over your shoulders. Excellent for tight neck and shoulder muscles and helps to soothe headaches, I find. I've also got this one which you can strap to your body, which is a brilliant idea because it stays in place if you need to move around. The Velcro is really strong, so it's not going to fall off. This style is particularly good for period pain and pain caused by endometriosis or polycystic ovarian syndrome. It also works well for lower back pain and even pain higher up on your back because you can put it across one shoulder like this. Spoonie Society also have mini Velcro wrap heat packs, which are great for applying heat to your knees or your limbs in general. I'll link the Spoonie Society site down below. They are a bit on the pricier side, but like I said, they're a small business and their heat packs are really well constructed. They'll last for years to come, so I think it's worth it. Just to be clear, I'm not affiliated with the brand. I just wanted to give them a shout out because they really put a lot of thought into their heat packs. Also, if you can't afford full price, if you follow them on social media, they frequently have discount codes so you can save some money. You can also make your own custom heat packs. You just need some heat safe fabric and the filling, usually wheat, rice or lupins. I'll show you a few of mine. I bought this random bag of raw wheat grains at uh, like a Middle Eastern grocery shop years ago. I was originally planning to eat them, but I ended up using them for heat packs instead. So I get really cold feet. Sometimes they just will not warm up. So I decided to sew pockets into my slippers and sewed some little mini heat packs to fit in them. Here is one slipper. Um, they're called slumbies, these, these ones there. Uh, kind of a hybrid between a slipper and a sock, which I think is brilliant. Um, so they're nice and sort of soft like a sock, but they have grip on them like a shoe. So you're not gonna slip over on a hard floor. These are um, well loved. I'm sorry, they, they look terrible. <laughs> I'm gonna try and find a picture that I took um, when they were still in good condition, when I first sewed the pockets on, um, because this is just, I'm sorry. So I just blanket stitched a little round pocket like that. And then I also sewed these little heat bags. Yeah, where's the other one? Where are you? Ah. Okay, okay, here they are. So these are just made these out of a little bit of um, scrap calico. And all we do is I microwave these and then put them in the pocket and that will keep my toes nice and warm. I would sometimes wear these to bed in winter just to get my feet to warm up so that I could fall asleep and then I sort of kick them off. I have a condition called Grierson Gopalan syndrome also known as burning foot syndrome, where it feels like the soles of my feet are on fire. And if I apply heat directly to the soles of my feet, it worsens that burning sensation, which is quite painful and unpleasant. So I prefer to apply heat to the tops of my feet. Having the heat packs on the top of the slippers also means that you can walk around with them on, which you couldn't do if it was on the base. It's really not comfortable, I've tried that. <laughs> I still need to perfect the design because the top layer is a tad thick. It sort of blocks some of the heat from getting through. But hopefully this gives you an idea of the sort of thing you can make yourself. If you need a long skinny heat pack to wrap around some part of your body, an old sock works perfectly. Just fill the sock with filling and sew the top closed. Easy. Last thing, if you're using wheat filled bags, you need to spray a little water on them every so often as this will prevent the bag overheating in the microwave and potentially catching fire. It is unlikely. I've never had a heat pack catch fire and I've been using them for decades basically, but I thought I should mention it. There are lots of other sorts of heat packs, including some that can be used hot or cold. You can get gel filled ones, some that have little ceramic beads, I think, 
you could also use a good old hot water bottle. If you do an internet search, you should be able to find loads of products. So I won't spend any more time on them here. Now let's talk about electric heating products. Electric blankets for your bed and electric throw rugs are great for keeping warm. I find they're also great for soothing pain, especially back pain. I can turn my electric blanket on and let it get nice and toasty, then lie down on my back and it will soothe the muscle and joint pain in my shoulders, back and legs. It also just makes getting to sleep easier, especially in winter. If I'm not warm enough, I cannot get to sleep, especially when my feet are cold. They just will not warm up on their own, no matter how many blankets I have on. So an electric blanket is essential for me. If you need to warm up your hands, what you can often do is just take your hand and put it down your shirt and onto sort of your back and the back of your shoulder. That will heat up your hands because your back does sort of give off a lot of heat from your core and that's a way that you can warm your hands. You just have to put up with the initial cold of it touching, touching your back, but it fades in a few seconds at least. I also have this electric neck and shoulder warmer. I have a lot of problems with my neck my shoulder muscles are always tight and sore as a result, and heat really helps to soothe the pain. But I hate having to get up to reheat my heat bags, so this thing is brilliant. Just plug it in where you're sitting and it will provide constant warmth in just the right areas. It's got a few different heat settings, it's got magnets at the front so it doesn't fall off, and it's machine washable. Not that I've ever actually washed it. Yeah. Please ignore the tape on the cord, that's not because of a fault with the product, it's because my pet rat chewed the cord. I will include a photo of the villain because he's very cute. <laughs> Thankfully the device is still going strong. This one is made by Sunbeam and I think I ordered it from Amazon. Sunbeam also make a version of this one that extends right down the back, so it's excellent if you've got back pain lower down. I also find this one works really well on the abdomen for period pain or endo pain. I had surgery a couple of years ago to remove endometriosis, and while I was recuperating in my recliner, I would turn this around and lay it over my hips, and it just fit there nice and snugly and kept that area warm. It normally sits upright like this, but if you lay it down across your lap, like that, it just hits all the right spots. So if you have endometriosis or pain in that area, this could work for you. You can also get rechargeable cordless heat packs for when you want the constant heat of an electric heating device, but you don't want to be anchored to a power point or fuss around with cords. The one I've linked is called a Hot Pod electric heat pack, and it's the one that some of my Spoonie friends use, but there are other brands that make them. The actual heat pack is kind of like a hot water bottle. It's filled with a gel fluid. You just connect the charging cord to charge it up, then you can unplug it and you're good to go. While you could take it with you on the go, it's a bit too heavy and bulky to carry around practically. Um, ideal though, if you're going to stay somewhere you don't have control of the heating, say if you have to be in hospital for a while. Now I want to go over ways to stay warm when you're out of the house. Going out when it's cold can be really stressful and unpleasant when you're sensitive to the cold. I hate being cold. Cold is pain for me. I can't count the number of times I've had to go out to some event or appointment where I just could not get warm enough no matter how rugged up I was. The discomfort can be severe and anxiety inducing, but there are some things we can do about it. Firstly, make sure you dress for the conditions. I always err on the side of caution and pack something extra warm just in case. It's better to dress in many lighter layers rather than one or two thick ones. That way you can easily adjust when there's temperature fluctuations and it helps stop you from overheating, which causes its own problems. It's a good idea to wear natural fibers, at least in the layer that touches your skin. Synthetic fabrics can be nice and warm and soft, but they don't breathe well, so you can easily get clammy and sweaty and overheat in them. Natural fibers are more breathable. Things like linen, cotton, wool, and bamboo will help keep you comfortable. Of course, clothes aren't always enough. I remember going to university in winter wearing six layers of clothing, including thermal underwear and a big coat, and still being unable to warm up. What we need is a way to warm up when we don't have access to powered heating. For that, I want to show you these little babies. 
These are disposable heat packs that you can take on the go. They contain a substance that reacts with oxygen to generate heat by a chemical reaction, so they don't require any electricity or batteries. To activate them, you just open the packet and expose them to the outside air. They're nice and lightweight, so I keep one or two in my bag at all times, and I make sure to bring several if I know I'm going somewhere cold. They're especially good if you're going to an outdoor event in winter or at night, such as an outdoor show or even a camping trip. You might have seen these sold separately at the chemist or the servo. There's often a box of them at the counter. That's great if you need one in a jam, but it gets expensive if you always buy them that way. Instead, you can buy a whole box of them online for much better value. This box cost me about $35 Australian from Amazon, if I recall. Uh, that was a little while ago. They might have gone up a bit since then, but they're still pretty affordable. I'll try to find them online and put a link in the description. These ones are called uh, Little Hotties. That's the brand, but there are quite a few other brands, so you don't have to get those exact same ones. Now, here's the real beauty of these things. They have a sticky back to them. This means that they will stay in place on your body. I'll just show you. You get two little heat pads in each packet. You're supposed to stick them to your innermost layer of clothing, but to be honest, I stick them straight to my skin. <laughs> You're not technically supposed to do that because they could become too hot and irritate your skin, or you might react to the adhesive as some Spoonies have very sensitive skin. I've never had those issues putting them on my bare skin, but do so at your own risk. These little guys are also useful for tight muscles and sore spots. If you've got a tight muscle or a joint that's really aching, you can stick one of these to the precise area that hurts and it's gonna stay there and keep it warm for hours. It just so happens I do have a sore spot. Let me show you. Um, I might just take off my Star Wars t-shirt. Okay, I think you'll be able to see it more clearly on my dark top. So, got my little packet, we just open it up. So we've got two little heat pads. And yes, they do look a bit like a pad, but no one's gonna see it. So they're starting to heat up right now. I'm gonna take the back off. Um, and this side of my neck and shoulder is hurting, so. Should I be a good girl and put it on my top? Nah, nah. I need maximum heat. I'm gonna put this right on my skin. Do it at your own risk. So just put that on that tight muscle there and that can stick there discreetly and supply heat. Um, I've also got, there's this muscle around my shoulder blades that gets really sore. So I'm gonna just Pop it there. Sorry, Luke, I still love you. As I said, I'll link this product below, but if for some reason that link doesn't work in your country, you should be able to easily find a similar product by searching online. Just make sure you get the ones with the adhesive back because some of them don't have that. I just, I wish I knew about these things sooner because they are a game changer. This sort of product also comes in a larger version. Flexi's heat wraps work the same way as the little hotties, but they are larger and the heat lasts longer. These are great when you need heat over a larger surface area or when you need something lightweight because you need to be able to move around freely. You can buy them in bulk to save a bit of money and you can often get these paid for through the NDIS. Uh, in fact, that goes for most of the products mentioned in this video. You can most likely claim them through NDIS if you have a condition that justifies it. I tend to only use these single use heat pads when I'm out and about or when I need something lightweight. When I'm at home, I use my bulkier heat packs and devices to save money and cut down on the plastic I'm using. The filling of these, um, both the hotties and the flexies, the filling itself is quite environmentally friendly. They contain iron powder, charcoal, and a few other non-toxic ingredients and when you finish with the heat pack, you can actually empty the contents of it into your garden and it acts as a soil improver. But they do have that plastic exterior, so I try not to use them when I'm at home. On that note, there are portable powerless heat packs that are reusable. I've also got some to show you. These are special heat packs that activate when you squeeze them. 
you just press the little metal clicker and it sets off a chemical reaction that produces heat. Really good when you're on the go, though you can only press them once before you have to reset them. To reset them, you put them in boiling water for five to 10 minutes. They hold their heat when you take them out of the boiling water and when they get too cold, you can press the button and have them heat up again. Boiling them can be a little tedious, but you could get yourself a bunch of these, uh, use a fresh one each day and just boil them all up at once when you've depleted your stash. If you get caught out without any heat packs, there are a few emergency techniques you can use. If you can find a bathroom that has functioning hot water, you can go and run your hands under the water for a while to thaw them out. You can also sometimes use heated hand dryers to warm yourself up. It helps if you can scout out the locations ahead of time. For example, when I was at university, I made sure to learn which of the toilets had hot water and hot hand dryers, and I went to those ones in winter. A hot drink also helps warm you up from the inside. Offices and universities usually have hot water heaters where you can go and make tea and coffee. If you're desperate, you can use the hot water from them or from the bathrooms to fill up a disposable plastic water bottle. Just one like that. Then just tuck the bottle down your shirt or in your lap and it will warm you. Just make sure not to use boiling water or you could burn yourself or it might melt the plastic. Just use warm water and test it to make sure it doesn't have a leak before you shove it down your shirt. And it should go without saying, don't drink that water. Disposable plastic water bottles can leach chemicals when they're heated. You don't wanna be drinking that. It's more as a once off use when there's no other option. You could also bring a traditional hot water bottle with you and fill it up when you get to your destination. Or you could even bring a heat pack if you know you'll have access to a microwave to heat it up. The only problem with these things is that they are heavy and bulky. So you don't wanna do that if you've got to carry it far but it might work if you're going by car or if you've got an able-bodied person with you to carry it. There's also a way to make an emergency heat pack out of a few common items, MacGyver style. Man, I'm showing my age. <laughs> to be fair though, most of what I know about MacGyver comes from watching The Simpsons and not from actually watching MacGyver. <laughs> you just need a towel of appropriate size, a hand towel works well, or a fluffy face washer if you want a small one. Run the towel under the tap to get it wet then squeeze out the excess water. You want it damp all the way through, but not dripping. Fold the wet towel a couple of times, then put it in a plastic bag and close the bag loosely. Don't seal it tight. There needs to be a way for excess steam to vent. Then microwave it until it's warm. It makes a great heat pack. This one is useful if you're staying in a hotel that's not warm enough, or if you're at a friend's place and it's too cold for you. You can ask them for a small towel or face washer and a plastic bag and you're good to go. Now I've tried this with freezer bags and with those old style shopping bags. I don't know if the new style plastic bags would be suitable. Uh, the plastic might not respond well to heating. So maybe err on the safe side and use a freezer bag. If you have access to hot water, but no microwave, you could pour the hot water over the towel or run it under the hot tap, then pop it in a plastic bag and use that as a heat pack. Uh, I haven't tried that myself, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. Okay, that's all for today. I've linked all the products mentioned in the description box. Keep in mind, you don't have to buy the exact products that I've linked. You might be able to find an equivalent product or the same product from a different supplier for a better price. And if you do an internet search, you'll be able to find various other warming products that I didn't have time to mention. There are all sorts of products out there heated jackets, heated insoles for your shoes, heated everything. You could also come up with some creative homemade heat packs of your own design. If you do, please tell me about it in the comments. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing and sharing it with your fellow sentient blanket friends. As it's winter in Australia, I'm gonna get back into my robe and my possum hat and I will see you next time. Bye. If I was in charge, I would make robes the national dress. You can wear them anywhere. Make it acceptable to wear your dressing gown or robe, whatever you want to call it. Just wear that out anywhere. Out to the shops, out to a presidential dinner, meeting with the queen, anything. You might need like a fancier version of a bathrobe for your meeting with the queen, but it's still a robe. It's still fluffy and you'd be warm. Hi. I am the warmest girl alive.
kind of hard to pin a lapel mic to yourself when you don't have lapels. Sometimes I look at footage of volcanoes, right? Of the lava, you know, you get that river of lava flowing down into like a pool. I always just want to get in it. Ah, it's just so warm. I just want to like sit in that delicious golden warmth. Like, I know it would burn all my skin off and kill me, but like, it still looks so warm. Mmm, forbidden jacuzzi.